Thought I'd do a quick video to explain empirical and molecular formula, how you calculate empirical formula, and then how do you go from empirical to molecular formula. So just before we start, we'll go into the definitions of the two terms. Empirical formula, simplest whole number ratio of each type of atom in a compound, whereas the molecular formula is the actual number of each type of atom in a compound. So just three examples just to illustrate that. So ethane has the molecular formula C2H6. The empirical formula, simplest whole number ratio of that is CH3. Benzene, molecular formula C6H6. Empirical would be CH. And chloromethane has the molecular formula CH3Cl. Well, that can't be simplified so it stays at CH3Cl. So sometimes the empirical formula and molecular formula are different, sometimes they're the same. Okay, so how do you calculate empirical formula? So I've got this grid to sort of help my students as they're starting out. You don't need it eventually, but we'll start off with it. So the first thing we do is we put in the atoms involved in the compound. So this is sulfur and oxygen, so S and O. And the first thing we write in is the mass in grams. So this first row is for mass. So it's 3.25 and 3.22. We then put the MR of each atom in. So we've got 32.1 for sulfur, 16 for oxygen. Remember it's atoms, not molecules. So it's 16, not 32. That would be a common mistake. I'd see. Why do we use those two? It's because we're going to work out the moles. So mass divided by MR gives us the moles. And I always say to my students, a minimum of three significant figures for that. Okay. So that comes out at 0 0.101. So you can't just go 0 0.1, you'd lose a mark. And this is 0 0.201. And then what we, you can probably see the ratio there actually, but to get the ratio, the one to something ratio, we divide both by the smallest. Okay, so that comes out at one because we're dividing that by itself. This comes out at 1.99. I'm sure you can all appreciate that so close to two, we can safely say that that is two. So IA2 there, okay. Now, we're not going to need this row in this um, example, but we will need it in the next one, okay? So we've got the empirical formula, it's SO2. Next one. So it's another oxide, this time it's of phosphorus and oxygen. So again, we put the mass in grams. So we've got 1.24 grams of phosphorus, 0.96 grams of oxygen, so MR is 31.16 moles, and three significant figures, 0 0.04 and 0 0.06. Divide by the smallest to get the ratio, so obviously that's going to be your one, and that comes out at 1.5. Okay. So remember in the, last in the last example, we rounded that up to two, so close to two. That's not close enough. So what we do now is we would multiply out. So that's why we need this extra line. And we're going to multiply them both by two because we've got 0.5 there. So if we multiply by two, we're going to get a two to three. That's your simplest whole number ratio. So this is P203. Hope I'm not going too fast here. Right, next one. So I've switched from grams from mass to percentages. The method's exactly the same, okay? So instead of putting mass here, we're gonna put percentage. Basically what we're doing is we're saying for every 100 grams, we've got that many grams of sodium, that many grams of sulfur, that many grams of oxygen. So it technically is a mass, um, if that makes sense. So I've got three atoms now, so Sodium, sulfur, oxygen. So we put the percentages in, 32.4, 22.5, 45.1. 
and we divide by the MRs. So put the MRs in 23, 32.116. So that's going to give us the moles. That over that is the moles to three significant figures 1.41, 0.701. 2.82 divide by the smallest to get the ratio so the smallest is obviously that there's your one so this comes out at 2.01 and this comes out at 4.02 so hopefully you'll appreciate that that's so close to two we can say it's two that's so close to four we can say it's four so we don't need this line, we're not needing to multiply this out, so we've got the formula, the empirical formula is Na2SO4. So percentages, grams, same method, okay? Right, so the last example, we're going to go from the empirical formula to the molecular formula, okay? So the first part of the question, empirical formula is just what we've already done. I've lost the, the grid now, Hopefully we don't need it. So I'll just put a little table sort of here, CHBR, just drop some lines down. So the first thing we're gonna do is put the percentages in, 12.78, 2.13, Dividing by the MR, so we've got 12.179.9. I'll write moles here, so that's, it, that's significant. So in three significant figures, 1.07 moles of carbon, uh, 2.13 obviously moles of hydrogen, 1.07 moles of bromine. Divide by the smallest, so they're both going to be one. And that comes out at 1.99. So hopefully you'll appreciate that is that is virtually two. So we're going to say that that's two. So the empirical formula, let's put EF for short, is CH2Br. Okay, so what about the actual formula, the molecular formula? Well, if that was the molecular formula, that would have to have a, an MR of a hun whoops, 188. That's a bit dark, isn't it? Uh, let's go for that one. So it's got to have an MR of 188. So what we're going to do is find the MR of the empirical formula first and see how it compares with that. So the MR of this, let's see if I can squeeze it on there, is 93.9, 93.9, which is obviously not 188. So we need to find out how many times bigger that is. So we're going to go 188 divided by 93.9 is two. So all, we've, all, we, all we need to say now is, well, the molecular formula is two times all of that. So the molecular formula must be two carbons, not one, C2, four hydrogens, not two, so H4, two bromines, not one, Br2. Okay, it's still got the ratio in, one to two to one, but that's the actual number of atoms in the molecule and that will give you that MR of 188. Hope that made sense. Uh, if you want me to do something else, just give me a shout and I'll see what I can do. Cheers, bye.